grandfather was a priest, and in that time, the Scotland area, they were tormented by pirates who would often sweep into the villages, and they would pillage the houses, they would burn the houses, and they would often kidnap the children. And that's what happened to Parrot Patrick when Patrick was only 16 years of age. The pirates came into the Scotland area, they burned his house, Patrick was hiding from them, hiding from the, from the pirates of the bushes, but they found him. They took Patrick captive, and they put him on a ship, and they took him, took him to Ireland, where they sold him, Patrick into slavery. Now, that's the kind of life that St. Patrick lived. He lived a life of slavery in Ireland, you know, a life of, 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 of a slave, of poor and ragged. He, he often kept pigs and, and sheep, and he was exposed to frost and rain and snow. But it was during this time, his life as a slave, that he began to start thinking more about God and who the God of his father. Because his father was a deacon, his grandfather was a priest, he started to think about these things as a life of a slave. And at age 22, Patrick submitted his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord opened, he, here's what Patrick said. He said, the Lord opened my mind to an awareness of my unbelief in order that even so late I might remember my transgressions and turn with all my heart to the Lord my God. You see... Shortly thereafter, after Patrick came to do the Lord, Patrick sensed that the Lord was telling him, he said, he said, he said, see, your ship is ready. So Patrick mounted a daring escape, and he traveled for many miles on foot to a harbor where he jumped ashore a boat and traveled back to Scotland, traveled back to his home country. He escaped out of slavery, and his parents and his family were so overwhelmed to see him, but, uh, but they begged him not to, not to leave. But see, something happens. When you're exposed to Jesus Christ, when you're exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, something happens in your heart. It changes you. It changes you. And see, suddenly Patrick had a desire to share the good news, to share the gospel with the people that took him captive. He had a love for Ireland. So that's what he did. He, because of his love for people, what Patrick did is, is he had this dream. The dream that he said he saw an Irishman begging him to come and evangelize Ireland. So it wasn't an easy decision for Patrick to leave, but at age 40, he picked up everything, he said goodbye, he returned to his former captive with only one thing, a Bible tucked under his arm. And what did he do? He evangelized the countryside. Multitudes came to listen to him. The superstitious druids and stuff were often persecuted him. He, he narrowly escaped assassination plots many times, but then new churches were found and multitudes came to the Lord Jesus Christ through his preaching. He said, for I am very much God's debtor, who gave me such grace that many people were reborn through me and afterwards confirmed, and that ministers were ordained from their river. People were coming to Christ everywhere. You see, people, Patrick loved the people of Ireland, and he wanted to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. the gift of the gospel of the people of Ireland. He was a missionary to Ireland sent to share the good news. And I think that what would be the most fitting thing here today is to do what Patrick would do. If St. Patrick was here today, you know what he would do? He would want to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. So I, in the spirit of St. Patrick, that's what I want to do to here today. What is the gospel? The gospel means good news. For there to be good news, there must be a flip side of that. There must be bad news. So what is the bad news? Bad news is that we're all affected with this terrible disease called sin. See, sin is fun for a season. Sin rules and then it kills. I just it's wonder, how long are you going to do this? And then it assassinates. Say, how long is he going to do this? He's going to be here sin. all day? Doing this because of the great stuff, sins? All of us are affected with sin. When we look at God's moral law, the Ten Commandments, we get to see ourselves the way.
Patrick wanted to share with you the good news, and that's why we're out here. For you to understand the good news, you must understand that there's bad news. That the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Jesus Christ came to this world to live the perfect sinless life. He died on the cross for, in our place as our substitute, paying the penalty that we deserve so that we can be set free in God's courtroom. The Bible says it like this, it says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. You see, everything, everything bad about us, everything, the sin, the sin debt that we've accumulated against God, God took it and put it on the feet of Jesus Christ. And all of God's wrath, everything that should be poured out on us was poured out on his son as our substitute in our place so that we can be set free in the court of God. And what does God require of us? He requires that we come to the end of ourselves. It means that we're willing to turn, to surrender, to put our faith exclusively in the person and work of Jesus Christ. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. This is why we're out here today, because we do not want to see anyone die in their sins. God today is coming. He's offered the free gift of eternal life. The free gift. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man can come to the Father except through me.